Come Holy Spirit. God is good. My dear friends in Christ, today, as I introduced it in the beginning, we are celebrating the martyrdom, the martyrdom of St. Boniface. St. Boniface, having born in England just many years ago in 1673, and uh, we are told that he was a member, a member of the Benedictine monks. He was among the religious. And uh, after some years of his ordination to priesthood, we are told Kwamba he was sent to mission in Germany. And uh, actually he made a lot of tremendous effect on the Christianity. Because he was sent actually in, the, in, the place of Ma- in a place called Mainz, where there was a lot of paganism. You know, many people were not Christian. So he received a lot of challenges, a lot of hardships, but he made tremendous effect in bringing these people back to Christianity. And uh, we are told in so doing, he was either identified and consecrated the bishop of Mainz. But um, when we reflect about the life of St. Boniface, we cannot miss to talk about the tree that he cut. We are told that one day, as he was doing his mission, going down to the villages, he found a group of pagans who were worshipping under an oak tree, and they were ready actually to sacrifice a child to that tree. So for him, he got angered and he went, took an axe and came and cut down the tree. And by so doing, we are told, well, he received a lot of challenges because that was now the cosmogony, that was the beginning of his now fight with the pagans. But uh, we are told a lot of people from that, they learned a lesson from that and they really repented of their sins and they were baptized. But that act of cutting down the tree which they were worshipping in, it brought a lot of rebellion from some who were really hardened. And uh, we are told that one day when he was traveling down to the village to actually administer the sacrament of um, confirmation, he was attacked by the beacons, and that's where he underwent his martyrdom. That's where he was murdered. So my dear friends in Christ, talking about the life of St. Boniface, we can't fail to talk about his teachings, especially those who are that moving, defending the faith that really he professed. You know, he went out of his way, you know, sacrificing his life, but defending that faith, and more especially in preaching. You know, more espe- he was an eloquent preacher. Uh, he really preached the word of God, reflected on the scripture always, and actually that one brought to his untimely death. So we pray that, uh, well, as we celebrate the life of St. Boniface, may we not always, not, may we not be afraid of the gospel. May we exercise our faith especially in our words, going out, whatever we have heard, whatever we, we profess, going out, and also to preach it out. And also living that effort that we profess in our actions. Today, in our first reading, we receive the graces, the mercy, and the peace from St. Paul, second letter to Timothy. He's saying the grace and the mercy and peace of our Lord Christ remain with you always. Those are his greetings to Timothy. Kwamba, Nema, Uruma, Namani, Yaki Christu, Ikai Nawe, Kilawakati. And he's reminding Timoteo Kwamba, rekindle the gifts of God that is within you. Rekindle the gifts of God that is innate within you. In a way, he was saying, Oi, each one of us is giving us a message today morning. Each one of us is rested with the gifts of the Holy Spirit within us. Today he's telling us we have to go deeper within us and rekindle that fire of the Holy Spirit that God has said it unto us. So we have to activate those gifts. We have to make them active in our lives. Because he's saying God did not give us the spirit of timidity, that spirit of fear. No. But he's saying God gave us the spirit of power, the spirit of love and the spirit of self-control. Kwa mwenyezi mungu wa metunemesha, haku tupatia yyo roho ya uoga apana, ila tupatia roho wa ngufu, roho wa upendo, na roho ya kiasi. So anatuomba kwa manasi pia tuwezi kuchitolea katika hali yetu. Ii tuwashe moto, moto wa vipachwa romu takatifa mbafyo, 
Mwenyezi Mungu ametuweka ametupatia. Each one of us is tested with the gift of the Holy Spirit but sometimes if we don't activate them if we don't make them active in our lives they just remain dormant. We just sleep on our talents. We just sleep on our gifts. Just like that man you remember the parable of the of the of, of, of the tenants of the talents so to say you know one was given five another one was given two and another one was given one. What happened to the one who was given only one? He said no. He slept on his talents. And now when the master came, he gave out just whatever that he was given. And that's what actually Saint, the second letter of St. Peter is telling us. That we should not sleep on our talents, but those talents that God has given unto us, we have to rekindle them. We have to make them active. We have to make them active. So, in so, so, so to say, we have to pray much so that we know the talents, the gifts that God has given unto us. Sometimes without prayers, we might fail to recognize the gifts the talents that God has stated unto our lives. And then St. Peter continues by saying, do not be ashamed of the gospel. Whatever that I said, that we should not always be ashamed of the gospel. And that was the life of St. Pontius. He was, in no way, he was ashamed of the gospel. He stood firm and spread the gospel no matter the situation that he encountered, no matter the hardships and the challenges that he undergone, especially with the Frasian Spakans in Germany. My dear friends in Christ, we are not alone. God is the God of the living and God, not God of the dead. That's what we are taught in our today's gospel, especially in this narration of the marriage aspect. Towards the end, Jesus is saying, look, God is not God of, of the dead. Kwamba ye ni mungu wa wale ambao walio hai. Na yule mungu ambao walio hai, ye ndi anatunemesha, is the one keeping us that strength to go on, to go on with our preaching, preaching the gospel in our words, and more especially witnessing Christ in our actions. Let us pray, my dear friends in Christ, that we may be true ambassadors of the gospel. We may be true ambassadors of Christ, witnessing Christ, no matter the situation that comes on our way. Through Christ, our Lord.